welcome back to the Carl, Carl, and Keith show, the KKK show. And we're here with Carl and Carl, and I'm Keith. We're here to talk about NFL midseason predictions. Uh, Carl, would you take it off? Well, uh, I think the um, Ravens will uh, repeat. Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore yeah. No, the. I'm just other clarifying Ravens. for the fans out there. Go ahead, take it away. The uh, Ravens will uh, be stellar as was last year and actually make it back to the Super Bowl and win it again. Back to back years, even though they lost a lot of personnel on the defensive side of the ball. I don't care. Don't care. Carl, don't They're going to win. What about you, Carl? Oh, well, uh, uh, starting with the Patriots, I think they will be a little bit behind it midseason because of, uh, you know, injuries to, like guys like Gronk. He won't be back probably to the second half of the season. So I think you'll see them fall behind, but kind of make a push in the second half of the season to sneak into the playoffs. And then uh, I think another team that's in the AFC that's going to be really strong is the Houston Texans. You know, they haven't had that threat opposite the, uh, Andre Johnson for so long. Now they added DeAndre Hopkins, and I think that's going to add a new dimension to their offense and just make it – that much more efficient, and I think they're going to be at the top of the AFC. But, Carl, here's my question. New England has a very depleted receiving corps. How are they going to do that? They have the best quarterback and arguably one of the best quarterbacks of all time in Tom Brady. But can he still produce with that lack well, of receiving corps? you've seen that in the past with, like, oh, you remember, like, when they were winning Super Bowls, they had Troy Brown, David Patton, David Givens, and, and again in 06 when they had, like, Rache Caldwell. So he can still succeed without elite talent at the receiving position. Carl brings up great points, Carl. Keith? Carl does that. Carl's known for that. I think we have a caller on the line. Uh, Carl, state your name and why you're calling. Hey, I'm Pete from Patterson. Pete from Patterson, hey! Uh, old Petey here. Uh, Petey, I miss Petey. Yeah. All right, so I wanted to know what you thought about the NFL draft. What was, who was the best player that was picked? The one that you think will have immediate impact? You want to take this one, Carl? Nah, Keith, you got it. Uh, I got it, Keith. I'm Carl. I'm speaking the third person, you idiot. Anyways, I personally am a big fan of uh, that Monty Teo fellow. Really big fan of him for Notre Dame. I know a lot of people saying that he uh, really slipped in the draft because of a very lackluster, it's my favorite word, by the way, mm. showing at the National lackluster. Championship game. Lackluster. 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 Marinate in your mouth. Mm. Lackluster. Oh. Oh. Well, what does Carl have to say about that? Uh, well, this draft was a little bit different than years past because it had more depth than, uh, it, it wasn't very top-heavy. There, was there wasn't a lot of star power, but I think that the two offensive tackles that you saw picked at the top of the draft, uh, Luke Jogel and uh, uh, Eric Fisher, uh, are both going to contribute to their teams early on because of the need at the, at the position for each of the teams that they're taken to. So uh, I think you're going to see them be uh, very good players in the NFL. Another 10 minutes going on here. We're going to go on for another 10 minutes here. <laughs> Good point, Carl. I really like that point, Carl. You just made right there. Uh, Carl, want to keep on talking for another 10 minutes or so? Uh, well, I think the uh, the tight end that the Eagles picked up What's in the name? second round. What was his name? I forget his name. You don't know the name? I don't remember his name. Oh, okay. Our producer being a real jerk about this. Okay, we're going to have to head out. But you guys, stay classy.